大家好，这里是听广播学英语频道。今天我们带来两个小故事。尽管俄罗斯轰炸，乌克兰哈尔科夫的音乐家们继续演出，同时二战老兵在法国纪念诺曼底登陆周年。这两个故事凸显了在逆境中的坚韧和奉献精神。好了，这两个故事对我们有什么启发呢 ？Today on State of the World. France welcomes a few surviving veterans for the anniversary of D-Day, and one Ukrainian city's orchestra plays on despite punishing Russian bombardment. You're listening to State of the World from NPR, the day's most vital international stories up close where they are happening. It's Wednesday, June fifth. I'm Christine Arasmith. World leaders are gathering in France this week. To commemorate the Normandy invasion, in a moment we'll hear from veterans of D-Day who are journeying to France for the anniversary. First to Ukraine, to its second-largest city, Kharkiv, the country's artistic heart, especially for classical music. Despite weeks of Russian strikes on the city, a conductor and his orchestra refuse to cancel their music festival. NPR's Joanna Kakisis sends us this postcard from Kharkiv. It's a few days before the big performance, and 17-year-old Varvara Kasyanova is rehearsing with the Kharkiv Children's Orchestra, where she's principal violinist. Despite the war, she says the musicians have come together, making what she calls magic. I've performed at music competitions and concerts since first grade. It's so important to share music with an audience. The musicians are practicing Ukrainian Suite, a piece by American composer Quincy Porter. They're at Kharkiv's Opera Theater, but not on its sprawling and majestic stage. They're in a small, dark room, several floors underground. Because of the attacks, I am very worried. So is my family. But I live close to the subway, and so the way to rehearsals is also underground. <laughs> Conducting the young musicians is Vitali Alexeyanuk. He's the artistic director of the annual Kharkiv Music Festival. And he also conducts the festival's professional orchestra, which has been shrinking in size since the war began. Before the war, uh, there were, I think, 10, 15, 20 bassoonists, and now we have zero bassoon players. What happened to them? They all left. We don't have tuba player because three, four days before the rehearsal start, he was mobilized, so he was enlisted. He's somewhere, I don't know where exactly, but now he is going to fight. We talk at a nearby park after rehearsal. Alexeyanuk is originally from Belarus, but has lived in Germany for several years. He came to Kharkiv just for the festival, as musicians from Europe and the U.S. used to do before the war. I asked maybe 20 or 30 different musicians whether they could imagine to come to Kharkiv and to perform here for our festival. 99% of them said no. A phone app alert warns of yet another attack. Attention, increased air threat in your area. Proceed to the nearest shelter. Have you noticed that not a single person has gotten up to leave? Did you look around? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always like that. The conductor soon returns underground to the musicians who are preparing for another rehearsal. The Kharkiv Opera Theater was damaged in a Russian attack early in the war, so its leaders created what they call an arts fortress in the corridors and spaces under the building. Ihor Tuluzov is the opera theater's artistic director. We only use the main stage occasionally for rehearsals in between air raid alarms, he says. But we must hold events in the safest place, the bomb shelter. The festival begins. Concert goers are dressed up, but they must go through security and follow a labyrinth of corridors to reach the wartime stage. The orchestra of adults performs first. And a violin solo brings the audience to tears. A couple of days later, the children's orchestra is on stage with a piano solo playing to a full house. Outside are air raid sirens and explosions. But here, 
there is only music. Joanna Kakissis, NPR News, Kharkiv. Now to France, where President Biden and other world leaders are marking the 80th anniversary of the Normandy invasion. The moment when the U.S. and its allies began to free France and Western Europe from Nazi occupation. Eighty years means most of the men who took the beaches on D-Day are now gone. But not all of them. A handful of World War II veterans are attending the ceremony. They arrived in Paris ahead of the commemoration, and NPR's Eleanor Beardsley was there to greet them. Cheers resounded in Terminal 2C of Charles de Gaulle Airport as 66 World War II veterans were wheeled from the plane one by one. The welcoming crowd waved French and American flags. Many held pictures of the men and a few women taken some 80 years ago. Despite the passage of time, Frenchman Frédéric Nancel recognizes the soldier in the picture he's holding and approaches him. Oh, this is you. (laughs) Wonderful. Wonderful. David Yoho says he's thrilled to be back. A D-Day veteran who lied about his age to get into the war, he's one of the few veterans who walked off the plane. Listen, we're glad to be alive. Average guy's pretty close to 100. How old are you? 96. I'm the youngest on the flight. I went in at 15, falsified. Yeah. Oh, it's wonderful to be back. We did a great job, but... 102-year-old Ralph Goldsticker is accompanied by his 73-year-old son, Larry, who pushes his wheelchair. My grandmother saved every letter that he wrote, 500 letters that I got to read. You know, so you look at your father as kind of a god idol like figure and realize these are boys. He was 21 years old when they're doing this. Bill Wall was a 21-year-old gunner on a B-24 bomber that flew above the landing beaches. He says he lost some of his dearest friends. It was just like sitting ducks. Young guys scared to death, no protection, and landing crafts, and some of them seasick, and they were just slaughtered. My name is Lewis Brown, and I'm 98 years old. Brown was part of the Red Ball Express, the famous convoy system that transported supplies from the beaches to the troops in record time. It's his first time back. I know everything is different down than what it was when I was here. Everything was just torn up. I don't remember no pretty airport like this. Welcome back to France. American ambassador to France, Denise Campbell Bauer, lauded what she called the greatest generation. A school group sang the French and American national anthems. These veterans will be the guests of honor in celebrations all week along the beaches of Normandy. Eleanor Beardsley, NPR News, Paris. That's the State of the World from NPR. Thanks for listening. We'll see you again soon.